Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can get right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of Canon's PowerShot Zoom. That's right, this is a PowerShot Zoom right here, one of Canon's most quirky and unique cameras that they ever made. And when they first announced this in Japan only, I made fun of the commercial that they ran because people were sitting in the stands, they're like, yay, watching soccer, they're gonna bring it home. Is it too soon for you English people out there? You lost, okay, get over it. The Italians won, and I know nothing about footy other than there's a bunch of babies that roll around on the field when they'd, someone breathes on them like they're hurt, whatever. Yell at me in the comments for that. Manchester United. <laughs> I don't have a team. Anyway, you look like this and it's like, oh yay, look at this, he scored. But what is this thing? This is basically a monocular. Think of a binocular as if you had two of these. This is like a modern day binocular if you wanna look at birds, if you wanna look at people on the beach, if you wanna take it to the kids soccer or softball game, or take it to a large event where you're sitting far away and wanna bring it from a distance and you wanna bring it in closer to you in front of your eye. But better than that, not only can you reach out and see things, but you can record with this. You can take video and you can take photos and the quality is gonna be depending on where you're shooting in the time of day. Now, let me tell you what I used it for. I used it to photograph kids playing soccer, uh, kids playing softball, just generally walking around in the park, getting people doing yoga, uh, influencers of Instagram style, you know, from a distance. I actually commentated some of them. I was like, oh, look at that pose. Reach out and grab your heart's muscle. I'm gonna post this on the internet. I'm gonna post this on the internet. And then seagulls, but also I took it to the Philadelphia Phillies game because I used this a couple months ago. I was able to go to the stadium and from wherever I was, I could get the pitcher, the batter. I could do video, I could do photos. Still not great quality, but at least I could see it image stabilized from a distance. This is something that would be interesting for someone who wants to look at birds and maybe just get a picture to share with their friends. Maybe it's the old lady who likes to sit out on her back porch and watch birds at a distance and send to her grandson like, oh, look at what I got, Johnny. I got this picture. It's a titmouse in a distance. Whatever a titmouse is, it, it was perfect. All right, let's take a look around this monocular. It is pretty unassuming. It is really small. It is really light. You might think you might have an issue looking through the viewfinder, the EVF, really not at all. The first thing that I thought when I took this out of the box is, hello, McFly, Canon, how do I protect the lens at the front? And the answer they gave me is, yeah, we don't know. Uh, there's, there's no way to do it. So what I did is I literally wrapped a lens cloth around the front of it and then used the wristband and then just did that so that it was protected when it was in my bag. But this is a scratch hazard. They should have just put a little door that either slides up and slides down and protects it like the old school way because they used to do that all the time. On the top, you have three buttons. You have a power button, a menu button, and a zoom button. If you want to change the battery, you're screwed. You can't change the battery. But if you open the side door right Right here, you have your micro SD card on the side, as well as a USB-C charger. Now, some of the complaints from people who already own this are, it didn't come with a charger, I don't have a USB-C cable, or I don't have a USB-C charger. Well, maybe they should have put one in the box, but maybe they didn't because they still kept this as a $299 item and maybe that would have added more money to it. And honestly, a lot of people have USB-C chargers when it comes to Android phones, but not if they have Apple. So maybe not a lot of people who are buying this have a way to charge it and they have to go buy a power brick. Now onto the bottom, you have a diopter dial. That's for people who wear glasses out and about like me, if I'm wearing sunglasses, I got a diopter right here. I've got the record button and I have 
What does that say? Photo button. So you can take photos with this and you can record with this. But now let's get to some of the specs. You've got a 12.1 megapixel third inch sensor, which is kind of the same size that you might find in your phone, if not a little bit smaller. You can take stills up to 10 frames per second. Now you can do that in JPEG. It doesn't give you raw. That's perfectly fine. Not a big deal. That's not why you're buying this. You're not buying this to shoot raw. You have a two time optical zoom that will give you a 100 millimeter when it's ultra wide, when you hit the zoom button once, it takes you out the 400 millimeter equivalent, which brings you in nice and optical. It's the optical zoom is, good, is, is pretty good. But when you hit it again, you get double 400, which is everybody, Steven, 800. 800, but it's a digital zoom that I thought would be pretty terrible because you're just zooming in on it, you know, twice. It's not that bad. You're considering if you're sitting super far away and you go from 100 to 400, to 800 and you just want to see a little closer, it's not really going to be that bad. Is the quality amazing? No. Is the low light capability amazing? No, not at all. This is really just a way to image stabilize whatever you're looking at so that you can see it from a distance because you have a four axis image stabilization in this and it works pretty well. Now, what I will tell you is that it's really clunky to use the menu system. It's like, there's no way to hit playback. You have to go through the menu to play back everything on your uh, inside the camera. It's just awkward to get through the menu system. I would have liked to have seen a dedicated button for playback and then make it a little easier to go through the menu. But you can also use the Canon Connect app to change some settings, but you could also have someone standing next to you. So you could be looking at a bird at a distance. Someone can have the Canon Connect app open on their phone and they can be seeing the exact same thing that you're seeing through your monocular. The video that you're capturing is 1080p up to 30 frames per second. Some people might complain that you only get nine minutes and 59 seconds of record time. I don't really care about that. How long do you need to sit there and look at little Johnny playing soccer? He's not going to be running around for 10 minutes straight. You literally could hit stop and then record again. And then you could go. I just was thinking of like a Bruno Mars song. Stop. Wait a minute. But I don't think that's that big of a deal to get a 10 minute record time on something like this. Cause let me, let me show you something. I want to break this thing out. This is what my mom had to use when we played soccer or sports or other things like that. This is a Betamax, autofocus beta movie by Sony. And guess what? Sony was way ahead of the game in 1984 or 85 or 86 when they had their pride strap all ready to go all the way back then. But this is what my mom used in Disney World. This is what my mom used when I was playing soccer or on stage doing something stupid. She used this massive thing with autofocus and a zoom. And of course the quality in something like this well, I don't even know if the quality in this is, I mean, this is 1080p. And what do you think this was like 280 Steven? Maybe, maybe 480. I don't even know what it was, but anyway, I just thought that this would be cool to show you what my mom carried around when we traveled or when she was photographing us or videoing us as kids. Let me jump in here real quick and say, would you like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? Just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. The EVF is 2.36 million dots. It's really not that bad. I mean, just think about this. This is more of a monocular, a way to see something at a distance with the ability to take pictures and to take video. You know you're not getting the best quality stuff in the world because it's a super small sensor. And in low light situations, it's absolute garbage and the noise reduction is terrible, but it is what it is. It's gonna be good for the people that want something to just reach out and see things at a distance. So what I wanna do right now is run a montage of videos from some of the things that I captured so you can get an idea of what this is capable of doing in the real world. So let's roll that zoom footage. That's a seagull, look, this is at 800. 800, that's 100, that's 400. Let me focus, and that's 800. Actually, doesn't look that terrible, but it's great for nature. This is exactly what I needed. It's really stable. Tugboat! Do they see me? I'm waving at you!
Huh? <laughs> right in the nuts. Wow. Wasn't that footage amazing? And the answer, Stephen, is no. Not really. He was a little hesitant to say full no. It was a it was a partial no. It's interesting. It's you know, for, if you have 300 bucks lying around and this is something that you want to take to a sporting event because you can't see very well, or you just want to follow along the action because, like me, you don't see very well, it's not terrible. The images are fine. The video is going to be actually pretty good. And when I was at the baseball game, it looked pretty good. The audio actually sounds pretty good in this. And if you want to reach out and grab birds, because there's a lot of birders out there, this is a really good option for spotting that. And if someone has an iPad and the Canon Connect app, they can sit next to you and watch to see if it's a Titmouse. I don't know what other other birds to mention. A kingfisher, a seagull, an eagle, an egret, a blue heron. That's all I got for that. So for 300 bucks or $299, oh, I should mention the battery life, not very good, but you can carry around a charger for your phone just as long as you have a USB-C cable, you plug it in and you're gonna give it some extra juice. It's not the greatest battery ever since sliced bread, but it's super small, it's super tiny. Charge it up before you go to the event, turn it off when you're not using it, turn it back on when you're using it, get those pictures, get that video, and you'll get something a little better than you would with your phone, especially for things at a distance. Cause your phone isn't gonna be able to zoom in to 400 millimeter equivalent optically. It's not gonna do 800, uh, the digital zoom 800 as good as this thing's going to do it. So this is going to do an okay job, but I do need to sniff it and tell you what I think about it. Mmm. Grandma. Smells like her sofa from 1963 where she sat in the same spot forever. You know that smell. You know that smell. Steven, you know that smell too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Everybody knows the grandmother smell uh, for the most part from where they used to sit. So, are you gonna buy something like this? Is this something you will add to your bag? What do you think? Leave some comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya. Okay, we're recording, hon. Hi, it's Sharon. I am here on vacation. Speak a little I'm louder, dear. This thing has a very poor mic. I'm the voice behind the camera. Ah! Blow out your candles. Did you make a wish? No. Here, daddy barbecuing.